Hello, welcome to another vlog. In this vlog, I want to talk about life as a Christian in Scotland. Scotland is a very atheistic country. The churches in Scotland are not doing so well. You know, most people here don't even go to church. So life as a Christian here can be very lonely because, because you know, it's hard making uh, Christian friends here because most people aren't Christians. And so I confess I have a hard time dealing with loneliness because there's no one I can share my faith with here because uh, you know most young people here are not Christians and so life could be quite lonely and also I am a young man I'm 25 I turned 25 only a few months ago and so you know I think about uh, becoming a husband and father one day, but so hard meeting Christian women here because uh, you know it's so rare. Like it's just so rare, uh, and yeah, life as a Christian here can be very difficult. And I'm not an evangelical. I mean, I'm in an awkward position. I'm not an evangelical. But, but at the same time, I'm not a liberal. So I'm not an evangelical and I'm not a liberal. Like, I believe in the supernatural. Like, I, I actually believe in God the Father. I actually believe that Jesus performed those miracles. I believe that he was resurrected and he was resurrected bodily. Uh, and so, you know, I believe in the supernatural, so I'm not a liberal. I mean, I'm, I mean, I would be considered a liberal by some. For instance, evangelicals would call me a liberal if they found out my views on uh, scripture, for instance. I, mean, I don't agree with the idea that the Bible is infallible. I don't think the Bible works that way. And also, I don't believe that, you know, the earth is only a few thousand years old. Like, like I just, I don't believe, I just don't believe in it. You know, the Bible is not a scientific encyclopedia or a scientific textbook. It doesn't work that way. So. So evangelicals would uh, call me a liberal for some of my views, but at the same time, I'm not a liberal. A liberal. So, uh, so yeah. So I'm in an awkward position. Like you know, like I don't like the evangelical churches, and I can't go to a liberal church because I'm not a liberal. I believe in the supernatural. I'm sorry for uh, going over this uh, too much already, but, but yeah, it's hard being a Christian here. It's hard being a Christian, and the thing about people here, the thing about uh, Scottish people is that they don't like talking about their faith. So, uh, I mean, it's different. I think in other countries, people are a lot more open about their faith. I mean, they will tell people that they are Christian believers, uh, but... It doesn't work like that here. I mean, believers in Scotland, they are embarrassed by their faith. And so people here, they don't like mentioning to anyone that they go to church on a Sunday. Uh, and you know, I'm quite, I'm very different from that. I mean, I'm very open about my faith. I mean, I share with you guys uh, details about my faith and the whole point of my vlog is you know I want to talk about my experience living the Christian life and so I'm very open about my faith you know I am a Christian I love Jesus Christ I have devoted my life to serving him and to obeying his teachings so I 
you know, I'm very open, like people know that I am a Christian. I mean, when I used to work at my last job, I mean, everyone knew that I was a Christian and people would ask me about it. Like people would ask me uh, about, you know, things I had posted. For instance, I once posted uh, something talking about, you know, monks, you know, monasticism. Uh, I was asked questions about it. And so people know that I am a Christian. Uh, uh, you know, I, 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 like, what's the point of keeping it secret? I mean, of course, we don't want to be show-offs. I mean, you should never be a show-off. But I do, I'm very open about my faith. But in Scotland, people are not open about their faith, really. And even with other Christians, they don't like talking about their faith. Because, you know, I remember, uh, you know, I have been to churches... And I have tried to talk to a Christian, a fellow Christian, about, you know, spiritual things. Like, he was talking about uh, the work of God in my life. And, you know, the person I would talk to, uh, that person uh, would very quickly change the subject. Or they would make an excuse to finish the conversation. Or they would pretend to listen to me. You know, I would... I would see their body language and they weren't really paying attention to me uh, or you know, they would acknowledge what I, what I said and, but they wouldn't like respond with any degree of uh, seriousness. So that's the thing about living uh, as a Christian believer here. People don't like talking about their faith and it makes life a little bit harder for me because I love talking about these things, you know, I love talking about God the Father. I love talking about the beauty of Jesus Christ. I love talking about, uh, you know, Jesus Christ, you know, in his life and his teachings. And I love talking about these things. I love talking about spiritual growth. I love talking about, you know, the work of the Holy Spirit. So I love hearing people's stories about you know living the Christian life, you know I love hearing stories about people who have uh, prayed for something and the prayer was answered. I love hearing this stuff, but you don't get it in Scotland really. And if you talk to a Christian here, most of the time they just don't want to listen to what you're saying. So if you talk about the Bible, if you talk about something you found out in Scripture. They will change the, the subject or they will uh, come up with an excuse to finish the conversation early or they will pretend to listen to you and you'll see that they're pretending through their body language. And so, yeah, it's, it's quite hard because here I am and I want to talk about my faith with other Christians. I want to edify others. I want to help build up others in their faith. And I want to be edified myself. I want my Christian brothers and sisters to edify me. I want to learn things from them. I want to be encouraged by them. I want to hear about all the great things that Jesus has done in their life. Of course, some people will say to me that, you know, how can you expect that? You know, some things are private. I understand that. I understand that some things are just private. But really, that's not entirely true because, you know, we need to, we need to you know, encourage one another. I mean, it's, you read that in the Apostle Paul. We have to build one another up. And that comes through, you know, spiritual conversation. It comes through... Uh, talking to people, to fellow believers, about what God has done for us. Uh, and, you know, Jesus says that we will be judged for every idle word. And so, you know, we shouldn't be talking about silly things. We shouldn't be talking about uh, things that just don't accomplish anything, like things that uh, just, you know, just kind of, just trivialities, uh, trivial things. We have to use the gift of speech well like so it's good to say noble things it's good to uh, encourage people through the things we say and spiritual conversation is a great way of helping people of building people up of encouraging them 
you know, and maybe, you know, through what you said, somebody's life has changed. And so, yeah, I, I believe it is very important to talk about spiritual things, but you don't really get it here, even with other Christians, even with evangelicals, because evangelicals are the ones you would expect would be very happy to talk about spiritual things. But believe me, and I'm, I say this from experience, a lot of the time they don't want to talk about it. Uh, they don't want to talk about it a lot of the time. So that's, that's you know, very frustrating for me, but that's just part of life, uh, for, you know, as a Christian here. I mean, maybe I haven't been to uh, a good church yet. Maybe I, I just haven't found the right church, but I, I, I just can't find it here. So if you are a Christian in uh, Scotland, it's hard because you have no one really... Uh, with whom you can discuss these things. And, and yeah, so I've already uh, spoken about this, but, you know, being single, it's hard uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, like, I want a family. I want to start a family. Like, I, I want to be a Christian a husband, a, you know, a good Christian father, that's what I want, that's one of my dreams, I want to be a good Christian husband and a good Christian father, but it's hard because a lot of the women here, they're not Christian, and, and yeah, so it's very frustrating, so, you know, if, you know, like, somebody in my position, you know, life can be very lonely, and, and so you have to embrace singleness of course like even if you weren't in my position and people were you know were more open about their faith where you know wherever you are you know even if that is true of you you know we have to embrace singleness but you know especially in my position because because you know it's just hard it's hard uh, and you have to embrace singleness and so I'm just I'm working on uh, becoming a better Christian. I'm, you know, I want to know uh, Jesus Christ better. I want to love him more. I want to obey his teachings more. And I want to have a better prayer life. I want to read the Bible a lot more than I do. I, I want to, I'm you know, just working on myself spiritually, having a better attitude concerning things, you know, fighting you know, sins and the passions you know, cultivating uh, the virtues, uh, you know, living unto righteousness. Uh, that's what I want to do. And so, you know, you have to embrace singleness. Uh, and it's especially true in my case, as I've already said, because uh, you, you know, if you are a Christian believer in Scotland, you, ha you have to, like, you have to embrace it because it's so hard meeting people who are also believers. You know, and people who, you know, also believe, uh, you know, that the Christian life is important because unfortunately in Scotland, and of course this is true everywhere, but in Scotland you have people who like to go to church, but they don't take the Christian life very seriously. You know, they're kind of, you know, uh, nominal Christians. I mean, we have a lot of that here too. And so it's hard to meet someone who is not only a Christian, but who you know takes the Christian life very seriously, who has you know very high standards, you know high standards in the Christian life. You know somebody who, who you know really loves Jesus Christ and who you know puts into practice the Sermon on the Mount. So that's hard. It's hard meeting someone like that. It's very, very difficult, and the majority of women my age, or slightly younger, or slightly older, are not believers, and so I have to deal with singleness, and I'm resigned to uh, the possibility that I won't meet anyone for years and years and years. You know, I might be single my whole life, but I, I have to, I, I just have to accept it. Uh, you know, I have learned to accept it. Uh, you know, I might not find anyone here for a very long time because, quite frankly, most people here are not believers and even many believers don't take the faith very seriously. So that is an issue 
uh, you know, being a Christian in Scotland, you know, it's hard to meet someone with whom you can start a family. And I want to be a family man. Like, that's one of my desires. I want to start a family. You know, I want to be a good Christian husband who loves my wife as Christ loves the church. That's what I want to be. I want to be a good Christian father who knows the scriptures well, who conducts family worship, who who, you know, shares the love of Jesus with, you know, his children, you know, who prays for his children, who is a great, great father, you know, full of compassion. Uh, you know, just I ask what I want. I want a, a strong family life. And I've, I've never really had it because of family dysfunction. But that's what I want. But it's hard finding it here. It's hard. You have to meet, uh, you know, a, a woman with good standards, you know, with good values. But it's hard because, you know, it's it's just hard because, you know, of course, I'm repeating myself. I apologise. But that is one aspect of life as a Christian in Scotland, you know, it, it means, you know, lots of loneliness because, and this is the last time I, I repeat myself, and I apologise, I mean, you have to get used to loneliness because most people your age, well, my age, most people your age and slightly younger and slightly older are not believers and and you know even many of the people who are believers they don't take their faith seriously and they don't like talking about spiritual things so it's hard making christian friends here it's very very hard and so loneliness is a reality for me and you know not meeting like it's hard it's hard you know when it comes to meeting somebody with whom you could start a family it's hard and so i just can't find anyone here uh, because you know most people here are not believers and even many of the believers don't take the faith seriously because we do have a slight problem with nominal Christians in this country even in evangelical churches so that's a reality of life here and also with uh, you know with you know being a Christian here it's very hard uh, when it comes to opportunities like it's very very hard uh, to find things that you can do, uh, you know, like, in regards to ministry, it's hard, like, we don't really have many Christian events in Scotland, and the events we do have, they're evangelical, but I'm not an evangelical, I think, I, I have, I mean, I'm, I'm a critic of evangelical Christianity, and it is, it, it's just, there's just nothing here, like, there's nothing here, and so I have to do my own thing, essentially. I, I'm the one who, who, you know, like, shares quotes from good Christian books. I'm the one who, you know, tries to write edifying things online. I'm the one who makes, you know, edifying, at least I hope it's edifying, you know, edifying content. You know, I'm the one who does all of this. I'm the one who's written two books talking about, you know, how to practically live out the Christian life. I'm doing all of these things, and people know I'm a believer. You know, people see the things I post online, and I like talking about it. I like talking about these things, but... So I, I have to do my own thing here. I have to do my own thing here because... It's hard, because there's just... There's, there's very little. There's very little here in terms of, you know, ministry, in terms of uh, helping out with an, an event or something. It's so hard to find these opportunities and it's almost non-existent so i have to do my own thing so i'm so i'm sorry for repeating myself but to sum up what i said you know i'm you know i wrote two books talking about uh, the christian life and i published those two books myself you know i used to have a blog uh, you know and in that blog i talked about you know living out the christian uh, faith practically and you know I make I made so many videos talking about you know the practical expression of uh, you know the Christian faith and you know I do all of that myself uh, and you know I, I make vlogs you know like this one now and in the vlogs I talk about living the Christian life and you know I write things online you know I share 
I share out the value in quotes, for instance. I, I, I write about things that I find helpful in living out the Christian life. I'm doing all of this, and I'm uh, sharing my faith with work colleagues and things uh, without being pushy. I know that's a danger. Uh, and without being, you know, like, zealous, but zealous without knowledge, you know, I'm, I'm very careful with that, but I'm the one who's doing all of these things, yeah, yeah, it seems like I'm the only person who's doing all of this, and, I'm, and it seems like I'm the only person who's who's willing to, like, actually identify myself as a believer, like, my name's out there, my face is out there, obviously, uh, so again, the loneliness thing comes comes into it, because here I am, and... I want to be a Christian. I want to be a follower of Jesus Christ in Scotland. Yet nobody is joining me in the effort. Like nobody is joining me in the effort, and there are so few Christians, you know, Scottish Christians online. I have noticed there's just so few. There's so few here, so I have to do all of this on my own. Uh, I I have to do all of this on my own and. And not only online, like I, I, I like talking to people about these things, but it seems like I'm the only person who, who wants to talk about these things. So that's, I know like, I'm, I apologise for all the self-pity, I'm sorry. I mean, that's not a good attitude, self-pity. It's horrible self-pity, I'm sorry. But I, I just want to share, you know, my struggles, you know, living out uh, the Christian uh, faith here. Uh, so yeah, but you just have to be faithful where you are. You have to be faithful. So that's why, despite the you know despite how discouraged I get, I keep on doing it. You know I'm still writing, you know edifying things online. I'm sharing edifying quotes online. I'm making all of these videos talking about, you know the, the Christian life and my experiences of living the Christian life. I'm the one who continues to make these vlogs in which I talk about you know, my loving out the Christian life, and, you know, I'm, I'm the one who, you know, still, like, I'm, the one, I'm just very open about my faith, and so I keep on doing all of these things, despite the fact that it seems like I'm the only one here who's actually doing any of this stuff, so you have to be faithful where you are, and that's what I'm trying to do with, you know, with the help of uh, Jesus' grace, I'm, I'm trying to be faithful, and you know, I've also done some podcasts with my friend in Canada. And so I, I, you know, you have to be faithful where you are. And of course, I have a, a good prayer life. My prayer life's a lot better than it was. You know, I think a lot about the faith and you know the beauty of Christ and things. I, I think a lot about it. And so you have to be faithful where you are. So that's why I continue to press on despite discouragements. Uh, and despite the fact that it seems like I'm the only one here who's actually doing anything. And so, yeah, there's a, there's, I mean, the church in Scotland is, is definitely, it's definitely lukewarm. The church here is definitely lukewarm. Like, here I am, you know, I'm full of passion. Not the passions, you know, like, envy and things, but, you know, full of passion. And yet, it seems that many Scottish Christians, they don't share the same passion. Like, they don't talk about uh, Jesus Christ very often. They don't talk about, uh, you know, sp spiritual things in conversation very often. They don't write about this stuff online. They, they, just, they live very secular lives. And I, I just don't understand that. I don't understand that. It seems, seems just, there's so much uh, lukewarm behaviour here. And I just find it hard to understand. Like, like you have such a great faith, you know, and because you know, our faith is simply Jesus Christ, and you have such a great saviour, and we, you know, Jesus Christ is everything, he's so beautiful, he's full of compassion and mercy, and he, he's love personified, you know, we have, you know, a great, great saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, yet people, you know, even like Christians who actually believe in the supernatural, I mean, there's, there's so many people here who are just in, incredibly lukewarm and you know here I am and you know I'm zealous I hope zealous in a good way not the arrogant way and uh, not the pushy bullying way and so here I am I'm zealous you know I'm full of passion despite the discouragement and despite uh, just despite like you know getting like like just no response from people 
uh, here uh, in Scotland. I, mean, I, I keep on pressing on. I keep on pushing forward. Uh, but it's frustrating because there's, there's so much, uh, like, this, the church here is just very lukewarm. And that is a reality of being a Christian in Scotland. You know, the church is so lukewarm. And again, the loneliness comes into it again because, you know, I am doing this and it seems like I'm the only one who's doing this kind of stuff. Uh, and so, yeah, like, like you won't find many Christian young people in Scotland who, you know, are on fire for Jesus Christ online or even in, like, their conversation. Like, you, 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 you won't find it here. And so, but I continue to do it because I know at least some people might be edified with what, you know, by the content I produce and by my conversation. You know, as long as one person, just one person is edified, then that's success for me. So yeah, so that's just reality here. And in Scotland, there's just, there's not much funding here. Like churches here just don't have much in the way of money. Like in America, like there's, there's, there's so much they have over there. There's so much they have over there, like just the money and everything and resources. Like here, we just don't have it in this country. And so uh, it's, it's hard, uh, you know, being a Christian in Scotland when there's just there's not much available in terms of funding. Like, like there's, just, there's just not much available. And, you know, and I'm thinking of uh, churches, really. Like, I'm thinking of churches that just don't have much... Uh, to use uh, for the gospel because there is a lack of money in this country uh, and that's why you know I think you know the American church like I, I ask myself what are they spending their money on because they have so they have so much money over there yet you know, what are they spending this money on well, here we are like here in Scotland and the church is in a very bad state here a very bad state and you know and we could use money, like, we could use help, yeah, yeah, just, we don't have much here, so, so, you know, in Scotland, uh, lack of funding is, like, this reality, lack of funding, you know, it's just, I myself, like, I, I do all of this, and I have, like, no budget at all, and I'm not complaining, because I don't want to make money off of Jesus Christ, and so with, with the two books I've done, I've said to my, oh, I've said to myself and to you know the whole world that I'm giving all the royalty money away. And with the videos, if I ever became popular on YouTube, which I doubt, but if I did, I'm not monetizing any of the videos. I'm not monetizing a single video. Uh, so I have like I have no budget to do all of this. I have no budget. I I don't have like no budget. I don't have like. I don't have like fancy cameras, I don't have, you know, fancy editing software, I don't have any of this stuff, I don't have like fancy lights and, and you know, I just don't have it, and so I'm doing all of this on no budget, uh, because there's, just, there's, there's nothing like in Scotland really, there's nothing like in Scotland that, that you know, enables you to actually get support. Uh, for projects and things, I'm doing this on like just no budget at all, and so in Scotland we have like a shoestring budget here, so that's a part of life as a Christian here. You you know if you want to do something for Jesus Christ in Scotland, I mean there's just there's there's hardly any money to do it to you know use in order to further. Uh, the glory of Jesus Christ. There's just there's there's just no money here. So I look at the American church and just crazy, and I think they waste it. I think they waste the vast majority of the money they have. Yeah, yeah. In Scotland, what do we have? We just we have like a few pennies, and that's it. Uh, when we could really like use, we could really like use some help here. Uh, so that's a part of the reality here. Like churches. Just don't have the money. Just you know, churches just don't have the money here, and I certainly do all of this stuff on no budget at all, uh, on no budget at all. But we, as I've said, we have to be faithful. Uh, you know, we have to be you know wherever we are, we have to be faithful, and so 
I continue to do this despite you know discouragement, you know despite a lack of attention concerning the content I produce, despite having no budget, I continue to do it. I can t- I keep on pressing forward because you have to be positive, you have to be positive. Uh, and so, so yeah, so that's like another aspect. And the thing about uh, the thing about life as a Christian here is that. Well, it's, 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 it's hard to explain. Uh, you know, churches here, they're very impersonal. Like, like we don't really have strong communities here. Like, the Scottish church is very impersonal. And so, again, that that ties in with the loneliness aspect. Like, I just don't... I mean, I think that the, the majority of churches here don't have strong communities. Uh, that's been my experience anyway, like... Like my experience of Scottish churches is that there's there's a little community. Like even when they have events, there's still like there's there's hardly any community. Even with events that might happen during the week, there's there's just so little in the way of community. Uh, it's just I think it's just wrong because you know we're brothers and sisters in Jesus, and and yet yeah, and yet just there's a lack of community. So that's uh, another reality of life, you know, uh, as a Christian in Scotland. There's, it's, it's very impersonal. There isn't much in the way of community. Uh, you, uh, just, uh, and of course, just, it's very lonely. It's very, very lonely. I'm sorry for, I'm having a hard time getting my words across here, but there's churches here, they're very impersonal. It's not like... I think in other countries, maybe there's a lot more in terms of community. Like, there's just... There's, a lot tighter. Maybe in other countries, you know, church life is a lot tighter. In Scotland, it's not like that. It's life, you know, in the church, it's a lot more impersonal. And so, and you know, with many churches here, you go to church on a Sunday and that's it. That's it. You go to church once or twice on a Sunday and that's the end of it. And that's the end of it. And even church events, like if, if you have like a special service during the week, Again, it's, it's, it's still very impersonal. It's, 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 it's kind of hard to explain. You have to experience it. But life in the Scottish church here, at least the churches I have went to, it's so impersonal. And again, it, it doesn't help with the loneliness because you want community. You want tight community. Yet most churches here seem to be little more than social clubs. Uh, you know, social clubs... Uh, that nevertheless are are impersonal because uh, there's just there's just no tightness there. Like it's like people, you know, they go to church and they have like a cup of tea and things and they talk to the usual people they talk to. But that, that's the end of it. That's the end of it. And so it's hard to. I'm sorry for like messing the explanation up. Be uh, but it's it's true. Like like churches here are kind of they're basically they're basically impersonal social clubs. A lot of them. They're basically impersonal social clubs. Social clubs that exist on a Sunday and only on a Sunday. And after the service has come to an end, you know, you talk to your usual, you know, like, you talk to your usual conversation partners and that's it. You know, everybody goes home. That's the end of it. That's what life's like here. The Scottish church is very impersonal. It's very impersonal, and you know there's so much nominalism here. Like, like people call themselves Christians, yet they don't actually enjoy talking about spiritual things. Yeah, so there's lots of that here. Like, there's just there's a lack of passion here. There's a lack of zeal here, and so uh, that's just that's just the the nature of it. And so you know, religious faith in Scotland is less visible. Like, people just don't talk about it. Like, people don't talk about their faith. People don't talk about going to church on a Sunday. They don't... They keep it secret. They keep it secret. Uh, so there's a lack of zeal. And I think that, you know, clergy here... I'm talking about evangelical clergy. They just want to keep things going as normal. Like, there's just, there's no radical uh, application of the teachings of Christ. They just want to continue things as normal. And so the church becomes just, uh, it just becomes like a, like a, it just becomes like a, a cosy little club, a cosy little club that at the same time is is impersonal. That's what the church becomes here. 
uh, and it's just there's no like there's no concept of the church being a kingdom in its own right, you know, because the early church uh, actually operated as its own welfare state in a way. It's no, there's no concept here. There's, there's, there's no concept of that here. Like the church is only, it's, it's just, it's just another institution among many. It's just another institution. That's it. It's just, you know, yet another institution. And so there's no concept of the church actually being a nation in its own right, a kingdom in its own right, you know, it's no, there's no, like, concept of that. And yet, you know, the, like, the whole point of the teachings of Christ is that the church is a kingdom in its own right. It's not just another institution. The church is, like, kind of like the institution, uh, in a way. I'm not saying that that the church should take over society. I'm not saying that. But the life of the church really is, uh, you know, the life of a nation or a kingdom because in the church we're called to community living, like we're called to live as a brotherhood, as a sisterhood, you know, like the early church had all things in common, that, you know, and, and the monks live like that, they, we don't have that here, we don't have that here uh, in, in this country, there's no concept of that, the church is just, it's not radical here, it's just, it's not radical, it just, it's just kind of like just another institution. It's just, just like another club, you know. Just, just it's hard to explain what what I'm what I'm talking about. I'm doing a bad job of it, I know. But but yeah, life in Scotland is definitely is definitely you know when you get you get annoyed with with just just I wish that the church here was a lot more radical. Like a lot more radical, but it's not. It's not radical at all, and they always they like to qualify the teachings of Christ. Like they like to qualify what he says, and that, that's one aspect of life in Scotland is that the church itself is just seen as another institution. It's, it's, it's not. We don't have like a radical concept of the church here. We just don't have it. We we lack that idea of the church as being you know the city on the hill, for instance. You know we we don't have that concept. We just don't have it here, and so there's a there's a lack of passion. There's a lack of fervor. Uh, so yeah, that's and so that's you know a part of life here, and so so yeah, like being a Christian in Scotland, it's it's hard because. Because it's just it's just hard because most people here are not believers and you have an impersonal church that is little more than an impersonal social club. You, you, there's just there's no funding and but you have to press on. You have to keep on going. And so I'm sorry for not doing a better job of explaining things here. But that's that's part of life here, and I do think that yeah, I do think that it is uh, tragic that that many churches here copy American churches. Like, I, I hate that, like, I think, like, in Scotland, we're starting to see mega churches, like, we're, we're, we're copying so much from, you know, American evangelical churches, and I think this is a tragedy. That's, that's another part of life here, like, like, people here, Christians here, they have no ideas of their own, they keep importing ideas from America, they copy ideas from America, but it's just, I don't think that's what, I mean, we shouldn't be doing that, we shouldn't be doing that, like, I think it's wrong, I mean, there's so much corruption in the American church, I mean, it's it's so unlike the teachings of Jesus, and yet we're bringing this stuff into Scotland, so, so that's, a, that's why it's so hard finding churches here, because so many churches copy the American model, yeah, I don't want to go to a church that follows the American model. I don't want to go to a mega church. Uh, I just, I don't want that. I want something that is deeper. I want something that is more serious, but serious in a good way, not a humorous way. I, that's what I want, but you just, you can't find it here. And so, again, there's just, people here just have no ideas of their own, like Christians who are involved in leadership. I mean, the only thing they know to do is to you know, the copy America, the copy the American model. I think that's just totally wrong. And I think the American model, you know, American ideas, I think it's caused so much harm all over the world. And in America itself, yeah, we, 
we have church leaders who are bringing that stuff here, and it just it's completely wrong. It's it's totally wrong. Uh, so yeah, that's part of life here. Like you have to deal with the importation of American ideas of church and the life of the church, but just it, but it just leads to more shallowness. It leads to more shallowness here. Like the mega churches, for instance. Uh, having like you know lots of programs going on at the same time, it's just I don't want that here. I don't want it here. Uh, I want something that just that actually works here, like something that goes back to the early church. That's what I want, but you just you don't get it here. You don't get it in the American evangelical church model. Yet we have leaders here who are bringing it over here, like. So I think there's a lack of ideas here. There's a lack of ideas. And it seems that like evangelicals in Scotland, they have no imagination. But when they, but when they do like do something, it's just it's so worldly. Like for instance, uh, using uh, a video game to you know get people to church. I think there's a church in Edinburgh, I think, that used the video game in order to attract people to church. Like, I, like what are we doing? Like is that is that is that like wise? Is that suitable? For a Christian church to to use a video game to attract people to church, like where is why are we doing this kind of thing? Like, just there's, there's just so much. Oh, it's, it's hard to explain really, but there's a lack of ideas, and when we do have ideas, it's not really our ideas because we just copied it from America, or we've seen some other church in another part of the world, and we just you know whatever whatever they did, we just bring it over here, like just just. It's kind of frustrating, really. It's like, we could do better than this. We could do so much better. Uh, we could do so much better. So, yeah, life... So, yes, the Scottish church is in a very bad way. Like, the Church of Scotland is losing so many members. Uh, people don't take it seriously. Uh, the Church of Scotland uh, it, it denies Christian teachings. Uh, you, know, you have ministers in the Church of Scotland who deny the resurrection, for instance. It's just that we have we have that. We have you know the free church, but the free church has become you know worldly a little bit because you know like musical instruments. Even though the early church did not have musical instruments in their worship, you know uh, you know allowing modern music into the church, you know like kind of like modern hymns instead of singing the psalms even though the early church loved the, psalm, the psalms and sang the psalms and I, you know, I think it's just compromising like, I'm not saying that I'm not advocating fundamentalism like I'm f not a fundamentalist far from it but I do believe that uh, our worship it has to be in line with the worship of the early church and the early church did not have musical instruments the early church sang the Psalms, yet we have, you know, a, a, you know, a denomination that, you know, decided to bring in musical instruments and to sing hymns, you know, like hymns that came, you know, like 1700 years after the time of Christ. Like, I just, I think that's completely wrong. I think that's completely wrong. And I think that denomination is bringing in American ideas of, <coughs> American ideas of the church and the church life, I think it's just completely wrong. I think it's completely wrong. And then we have, you know, like the, the, the free church continuing, which is like a fundamentalist denomination, like very, very Calvinistic. But I think that Calvinism has done a, a great deal of harm here. And so I don't want any more of that. And fundamentalism is wrong. So we have that. And we have like the Catholic church, but the Catholic church in this country has been rocked, you know, with scandal. So I think a lot of people here just have no uh, trust of the Catholic Church because the Catholic Church here has, you know, had to deal with sexual scandals, like serious sexual scandals. So that has uh, become kind of discredited in Scotland. Uh, so, we, so we have that. And then you have the Scottish Episcopal Church that is very similar to the Church of Scotland and just denying truths of the, you know, truths of the faith. So we have that. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I'm very. I like the Orthodox Church. I, I, I'm. I really like the Orthodox Church. But the frustration, the the frustration I have is that there's just there's not much of an Orthodox presence here. Like, 
at least in Dundee where I am, there's there's hardly any, I mean, Orthodox presence in Scotland. So it just life here could be very very difficult because just just because we have like so many evangelical churches yet. I just don't feel, I don't feel Christ in these churches. I think the evangelical church is opposed to the teachings of Christ. And I, and I think, you know, the evangelical church, it's, it's ahistorical because it doesn't follow the teachings and practice of the early church. And, you know, as I've said already, evangelical churches are bringing over American ideas. And so there's like this shallowness in many of these churches and there, and many of them are so impersonal because we don't really have strong communities in Scottish churches. We don't really have that here. It's not like in America where there's you know more of a you know like more community life in their churches. It's not like that here. Uh, it's not like that. You don't really have strong communities in Scottish churches here. It's more impersonal, kind of like impersonal social clubs. Just to sum up what I said earlier, uh, and so. Yeah, that's that's just so. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a lot just there's a lack of ideas here. There's a lack of ideas. Uh, you know, there's a lack of fervor. Like, there's a lack of passion. So yeah, it's it's hard being a Christian here, but you just, you have to keep on going. You have to keep on going, and and you know, and it's just sad. Like, pray for Scotland. It's sad. Or you, you know, like you know, like the churches are losing members here. You know, the Church of Scotland is losing so many members. Uh, you know, churches keep closing down. Uh, and we have lots of churches that only have old people as congregation members. You know, so churches like that will die. Uh, there's a lack of funding, uh, you know, a criminal lack of funding. Uh, you know, we have churches here that are following the American model, which is not good at all. Uh, it's completely wrong. Uh and just yeah, it's just, it's just sad. Like there's a lack of energy here, and like you, you, just there's just no energy here. There's just there's no there's none of that enthusiasm for Christ. You no, know, like a, a humble enthusiasm, not uh, a horrible enthusiasm, uh, a humble enthusiasm. There's none of that here really, uh, and so yeah, and I it's just yeah just. And there's no concept of the church as being, uh, you know, the institution. There's no concept of, of that, you know, of the church being, you know, the city on the whole. There's just there's none of that concept. So there's a lack of, like, passion in the churches here. There's a lack of passion. Uh, and so yeah, I, I, that's just part of the problem we have here. There's, and it seems like not enough people here are standing up. Like it seems you know, like Christians here. Are very scared about talking about their faith. They're very scared uh, of do they're, just, they're scared of doing it. Uh, I don't believe in that at all. I think you have to be open. You have to be open. Excuse me. Uh, so yeah. So so life here is can be very difficult. <laughs> but but you know I'm but I'm I'm positive. I'm positive. I'm sorry that I've not done a good job of explaining things at times. I'm sorry, but that's true. So so to sum up, you know, life in life as a Christian in Scotland can be very lonely. It's hard to meet Christian friends who have the same seriousness uh you have. Uh it's hard to meet uh you know Christian women uh with whom you can maybe start a family one day, God willing. Uh, it's hard to find churches here because, you know, I'm not an evangelical, yet at the same time I'm not a liberal either. Uh, you know, there's there's a lack of an orthodox presence here. Uh, you know, generally, and in Dundee, there's a lack of an orthodox presence. Uh, you know, so many churches are bringing over into Scotland the American model, and I think that's doing so much harm. Uh, there's a lack of ideas, uh, and the ideas that we do have are worldly, uh, or they're not really our, our ideas, they, they've been imported from somewhere. Uh, the you know, churches here, they're very impersonal, they're kind of impersonal social clubs. Uh, there's a criminal lack of funding here, a criminal lack of funding. Uh, there's a lack of energy, a lack of fervor, zeal, passion. Uh, there's no concept of the church as being a kingdom in its own right. The church is just seen as yet another institution. Uh, you know, the teachings of Jesus Christ 
uh, they, they're re-read and qualified, so they're not as radical as they actually are. Uh, there's a lack of events here. There's a lack of events. There's a lack of opportunity, you know, to, to participate in ministry, and so there's just there's not much going on here, uh, you know, in terms of events and the events we do have. They're evangelical events. Yet I am not at home in evangelical Christianity. Uh, yeah, it's just, you know, we have uh, you know, like churches that are closing down and we have so many churches that are just full of old people, but churches like, you know, churches like that won't last much longer. And so we have all of these problems here uh, in the Scottish church. But uh, so do pray, do pray for Scotland, do pray for Scotland. There's always some hope, like we do have some Orthodox churches here, even if you don't have many, we do have some... And there's, you do have people here, you do have people here who take the faith very seriously. And you probably even have churches here with good communities, but it's just, it's so hard. So do pray for Scotland, uh, pray for me. And you know, thank you for watching this video. I'm sorry that I I struggle to explain things. Uh, you know, for instance, uh, for instance, I, I struggle to explain the, you know, the personal side of things. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry for for failing in that regard. Uh, so I I yeah I I commend your patience in watching this video. Uh, so yeah, do pray for me. I I pray for you. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, so you know, please pray for me, and most importantly, pray for the church in Scotland. Please pray for the Scottish church. Uh, so yeah, thank you for watching this. Thank you for watching this. <laughs> Goodbye.